Hi guys, it's ASBYT and welcome to a brand new video. And if you're looking to buy a brand new Android box for streaming and gaming in 2020, then this one might just be the one for you. The Nvidia Shield has always been the reference in terms of performance for others to live up to. And Amazon with their Fire TV products have also cornered the sort of budget end of the market. But both of those products do have their downsides and uh, this might just be the answer. I'll show you what it is, go over its features, talk about streaming quality with apps like Netflix, gaming quality, the remote benchmark scores and more. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. Now, if you are a long-term follower of the channel, you will know I used to review a lot of different streaming devices like Fire TVs, Nvidia Shields, and a lot of standard Android boxes. You'll also know I moved away from the field because I didn't feel there was enough innovation. Everything was getting quite stagnant and boring with the exact same average to poor specs as manufacturers seemed more interested in churning out the same old products year in, year out with low build quality and absolutely no promise of software support just to make a quick buck but I've kept my eyes and ears to the ground. So when a product does come out that challenges that status quo, I'm ready to review it. I did that last year with the B-Link GT King, a very popular device. And now we have the updated model, the B-Link GT King Pro named of course, because well, let's be honest, anything that's remotely better is a pro model. Rant for another video. I will leave a link for this product in the video description below, right underneath the like button. And I'll also leave a link for a video that I did previously on my top best seven VPNs that you can use in 2020, if you're interested in that as well, because often these sorts of videos go hand in hand. So build quality here is excellent. Often these boxes are made of cheap plastic that looks and feels like it will break with a gust of wind. Not that kind of wind. <laughs> This has a mainly metal construction, which gets a little hot in heavy use, but I don't really see a real negative impact on performance. You have a headphone jack, ethernet, HDMI, RS-232, and power ports, a dedicated on and off button, SD card slot, three USB 3.0 ports, and one USB 2.0 port as well. It's a shame they haven't included any type C ports, but hey, you can of course use those USB ports to plug in a wireless remote, for example, like the one that comes in the box. This remote is not terrible, but it's just okay. You've got great functionality like voice control, brilliant for navigating your way through the internet browser when typing is far more laborious. It also has an air mouse, which on the whole works well, but sometimes decides to have a random brain fart for about five seconds before business as usual resumes. The main downside of this remote is the build quality, which sadly doesn't match the box and the buttons, which lack a reassuring clickiness and accuracy being on the whole a bit of a mushy mess. And that is some good alliteration right there. Of course, you can pick up a pretty decent and affordable remote online, and I'll try and leave a link to a few in the video description as well. Not a deal breaker, just a bit generic for my liking. With output up to 4K at 75 frames per second, it offers a great option for streamers, but with a catch. It supports 4K streaming in YouTube and apps like Kodi, but whilst being compatible with Netflix and Amazon Prime Video, it is so at standard definition only. Not a huge deal breaker for me, but it might be for some of you. Positively, this box does, on the other hand, have compatibility with DTS Listen and Dolby Audio. Gaming is also achievable here, and while it's not a complete replacement for console gamers, it's a tidy all-in-one. One other thing I really dislike is the pretty awful home screen that B-Link seem forever destined to use. It looks a bit like it was designed for a four-year-old, and it's basic and bland at best but it is easy to navigate with options for favorites, all apps and the Google Play Store, as well as our own custom store. And of course, if the home screen offends you as much as it does me, you can of course throw a launcher on it as I've done here. The Nvidia Shield running official Android TV and the Fire TV devices running Fire OS might be more seamless and fluid to use with not as many occasional software glitches, but this has more customization and has a full Play Store, unlike those two with the Shield not even having a decent an internet browser available without the need to sideload, which of course can be a pain for some. Downloading apps from third parties is also easier on the GT King Pro than both of those two, making it a great device for those who want to consume content from the 
not so mainstream apps. The chipset here is the updated S922X-H from the S922X in the standard GT King. And with its four gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, its performance outside of some interesting quirks, more on that later, is pretty brilliant for an Android box. With Antutu benchmark scores just under 130,000, it sits a fraction above the standard GT King and a fraction under the Shield. So with all that being said, should you buy it? Well, if you're looking for a brand new streaming slash gaming device and you don't like the restricted nature of the Android TV OS and the Fire TV OS, then this is probably the best performing box on the market. If you already have the standard B-Link GT King, is this worth the upgrade from that? I'd have to say probably not. I don't think performance wise you get enough of a jump for that outlay of cash, but if you don't have that box, then I can strongly recommend this. Is it different enough to blow me away? No, I think far more could and probably should be done in this area of tech. And it actually pains me seeing and using Android boxes and the like and comparing them to the tech we have in our fingertips like smartphones. Clunky and not user friendly with a feel across the board of a piece of tech that's dated and feels like it's been left behind. So come on Google, Apple, etc. It's time to stand up and revamp this corner of the tech globe, even if globes the globe doesn't have corners. <laughs> Let me know what you think of the B-Link GT King Pro in the comment section below. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Are you gonna get it? Are you not gonna get it? What do you use? And do you need an upgrade in 2020? As always, if you liked and found this video helpful, drop a like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're new to the channel. And wanna be notified every time I post a video on anything tech, news, unboxings, reviews. I love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. CSBYT, peace out.